October 25th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, James chapter 4 from the New Testament. Where do the conflicts and where do the quarrels among you come from? Is it not from this, from your passions that battle inside you? You desire and you do not have. You murder and envy and you cannot obtain. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly, so you can spend it on your passions. Adulterers, do you not know that friendship with the world means hostility toward God? So whoever decides to be the world's friend makes himself God's enemy. Or do you think the scriptures mean nothing when it says, The spirit that God caused to live within us has an envious yearning, but he gives greater grace. Therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So submit to God, but resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and make your hearts pure, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and weep. Turn your laughter into mourning and your joy into despair. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Do not speak against one another, brothers and sisters. He who speaks against a fellow believer or judges a fellow believer speaks against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but its judge. But there is only one who is lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. On the other hand, who are you to judge your neighbor? Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go into this or that town and spend a year there and do business and make a profit. You do not know about tomorrow. What is your life like? For you are a puff of smoke that appears for a short time and then vanishes. You ought to say instead, if the Lord is willing, then we will live and do this or that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So whoever knows what is good to do and does not do it is guilty of sin. God, we miss the point. We miss the point of our relationship with you. We don't understand submission. We don't understand humility. In our world, the world that we live in, we're very used to being independent. In fact, we're taught to be independent from a very young age. It's very much the system that the world has. Very clearly, James is talking about not becoming part of that system, but it's, and no excuse, God, obviously, but it's ingrained into us. We're, we're taught independence in school, um, to think for ourselves, uh, to do certain things on our own, to, uh, the whole school system is set up so that we go on to, to get jobs. <laughs> That's what the school system is set up for, uh, is to teach us how to be worker bees, basically. And so we're completely set up for this independence, independence upon the world. And you, you very clearly throughout the whole Bible say, no, you need to be dependent on me, not the world I created, but its creator. And it's fascinating because you say this multiple times throughout the Bible, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, in, in Matthew 6, you say, seek first your kingdom, the kingdom of God, and your righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. In Luke, you say, seek my kingdom above all else, and I will give you everything you need. I think about our day in and day out decisions, um, what time to get up in the morning, um, what to wear, what to have for breakfast, uh, what emails to sit down and answer, what happens on our to-do list for work, uh, getting the kids off to school, um, working within the home, uh, all these decisions that everybody has day in and day out. Um, even for people who drive to work, uh, people who have meetings, uh, time you leave work. A and for, I would say, most of us, these are habits. These are just patterns. We don't even really intentionally think about them anymore. They just happen. We just always get up at a certain time. We go certain places. We do certain things. And James was really clear about this. 
that we need to seek your will first in all things we do. <laughs> it doesn't say anywhere in there, seek you only on the big questions. Seek you only on the things that we're struggling with. Seek you on the things that you in intentionally and specifically ask us to seek you on in the Bible. You say in all things so that we are constantly doing your will. And God, I can't speak for anybody else, but I know I fail in that so often. So much of my life is done truly by habit, truly by patterns that I've developed my entire life. And the pattern you want us to, to have is to check in with you first. God, is this your will? God, is this your plan for my life? And one of the things I've started doing, because I heard another person who did this and I thought it was pretty amazing, is to get up in the morning and the first words out of my mouth are, your will, God, your will today. Um, whatever that looks like, um, not only allow me to see it, but allow me to do it, empower me to do it. And if that means certain other things don't happen the way I want them to today, then let me be okay with that because it's your will that's happening. And I know, I know without a doubt, on those days where I truly say those words and truly mean those words, uh, my days turn out very differently than the days I just do by habit, by pattern. Um, it's, it's almost like a little bit like sleepwalking through our day. We're so used to how our days go inside and out. God, allow us to be intentional about you being in our lives, not segmenting you into the parts that only make sense to us, but in full, in full submittal, in full obedience to you, that we come to you with everything. And at first it's going to seem a little bit silly. Um, that's our own <laughs> perception. A little bit silly, but I have learned uh, that when I ask you into my life and all the decisions of my life, it's kind of crazy awesome how different my days turn out. It's kind of crazy awesome how different my plans change uh, and how you make things happen in my life that I probably would have never experienced before uh, because I'm doing your will. I'm doing what you actually created me to do. God, allow us today to ask you into every part of our life. When we get up in the morning, your will today, God, what does that look like? Is it your will for me to um, get to work at this time? Or is there, is there something else you have planned for me? You know, many times I've been on my way to something and, and you've sidetracked me onto something else. Somebody who needed help, somebody who, who needed prayer, somebody who needed something. And this insistence of <laughs> going after the world and, and the riches of the world needed to stop at that moment because one of your people needed something. And I probably would have never heard that, that cry of help if I had just been solely focused on what the world tells me is important. God, allow us to think differently today and in all the days going forward about how we do our lives day in and day out. Are we on autopilot or are we intentional about seeking your will in all things that we do? In your son's name I pray. Amen.